Well, good afternoon, everybody, and happy end of January. Today is the last day of January, and I hope you're as excited as I am that spring is uh, one day closer. Uh, a couple updates I wanted to share with you, and since I've been talking lately in, in these videos about the agency, I thought today I would really focus in a little bit more on our programs. So I've got, uh, it's always good to start with uh, some good news, so I wanted to start with some good news today, and I want to bring to your attention, you may have seen it in the daily update, but it's always good to recognize it this way as well. But uh, the Georgia Industries for the Blind uh, actually was awarded, it's called the, uh, I gotta find it here, the Employment Growth Award for 2014. It's an award that focuses on employment retention, growth and upward mobility for people who are blind and that was awarded to GIB from the National Industries of the Blind or for the Blind excuse me so congratulations to everybody down at GIB uh, next I want to uh, give you a little update on DAS uh, as you all know we completed the employee survey and beginning actually next week uh, myself and uh, several of the management team will be visiting all of the DAS offices around the state and we're going to meet personally with every manager and supervisor within DAS to get their ideas and input on how we can continue to improve morale and move things forward. Uh, next, BEP. Uh, some of you may not know uh, some of the new neat and interesting things that BEP is, is taking a look at. Two things in particular that we're real excited for them to investigate and these are their ideas, not certainly mine. One of the things is a micro-mart. A micro-mart, as I understand it from Raj and her team, is that it's a uh, really self-administered or self-managed uh, vending site, and it's cashless. So people can go in and use EBT cards or debit cards or credit cards and actually purchase their, their meals and have them prepared without a vendor having to be present. Kind of the new wave in vending. So they're looking at... Uh, implementing a couple of micro marts in some of our locations. And then the second thing, which is even a little more interesting, is looking at beginning to do a laundromat as opposed to food service vending. And they're actually looking at a laundromat in Tucker as the first location. And it too would be a cashless. So rather than putting the coins in the machines, these would be machines that would be operated and engaged through an EBT card or a debit card or a credit card. So some interesting things going on in BEP, trying to look at new ways to attract younger blind vendors. Let me give you some other good news about VR and, and some of you who work in VR, probably all of you who work in VR would have probably gotten this morning Ed James's VR report that kind of gives you all the numbers over the past month, but there's a couple things I wanted to highlight for everybody in the agency. And the first thing is uh, just the numbers of VR clients. And as you know, we had a difficult start as an agency, and certainly VR suffered through that. But they're up and running, uh, kind of at full tilt. So this past month, there were 741 new applications for VR clients. And year to date, that's from July 1st through the end of December, VR has served 24,931 clients. So things have picked up and we're real excited. And to all the VR staff who are serving those 24,931 clients, I appreciate all the hard work you do and I really thank you for your efforts in, in making uh, VR kind of getting it back on its feet and getting its legs under it. Uh, some other numbers I wanted to share, and this has to do with business relations. And as you know, we've got kind of multiple prong approach to business relations. We've got Joseph here at the agency kind of doing business development. We've got Rosani and VR and her team. Warm Springs is looking at some job development people as well. But uh, one of the numbers that struck me this morning is that just in the month of December, they have called on 12,408 employers. Of those 12,408 employers, they've had 1,126 leads, which is great. Also in the report, it talks about some of the new employers that we're trying to develop relationships with around the state include the Publix, Distribution Center, Randstad, Office Depot, Office Max, Yamaha, and Concentra Pharmacentra. So congratulations to the new efforts by Business Development, all of the folks working in there including those of you who are the uh, business, I think it's called now the business relations specialist in the field. Congratulations. 
hard work and it's being recognized and it's going to pay off great dividends, so thank you very much. Uh, and then let me move on to Warm Springs. And Warm Springs has really been focused since the hospitals were transferred to Georgian Regent University on July 1. The rest of the campus uh, and Bill and his team are really working on developing kind of uh, skill training opportunities for VR clients for the future. And so there's some really neat things that they're doing. They've been in the transformation of what used to be called the ENT building, evaluation and training building. That's completely being renovated. Uh, but some of the new uh, skill trainings that they are about to embark on uh, are really pretty interesting. Uh, they have an area around robotics. And just for your information, all of these new areas tie into the governor's high, command, high demand career initiative. So, and it also, are, these are jobs that have some pretty good starting wages and we think people with disabilities can do them just as well as the next person. So we're gonna have a training program in robotics. An average starting wage there is $20.85. Uh, computer control operator, gonna have a training program there. And, and those kind of jobs are found in agriculture, food, aerospace, automotive manufacturing, manufacturing. Uh, two that are really interesting, and I've only seen a very small preview, uh, they're called Sim Log Heavy Equipment and Sim Spray Auto Body Painting. And so these are simulated, uh, and I'll use the uh, auto body painting, where you're using uh, really more of a computer, but it's simulating what it would be like to actually spray paint a car. You feel the pressure of the painter. It tells you how good your painting is. Are you putting on the paint evenly? Uh, and just kind of the future of how we can do some neat training down at Warm Springs. Um, both of those, the starting wage for jobs in that industry is $11.46 or $11.66. Uh, they're looking at some uh, sim build carpentry, same thing. Uh, residential wiring, um, welding, solid works. Uh, so uh, we hope that over the next several months you'll start to see uh, some of these real new creative kind of state-of-the-art training programs come into place. So that's kind of an update on all the programs, just little snippets of highlights. And again, thank you to all the people who work in the programs to support the agency and support our mission. Uh, lastly, one thing I'll share with you is that uh, I think I am scheduled Monday at some point to present to the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee. Uh, we, along with six other agencies, will be presenting to them, and I'll keep you posted as the legislative session continues. That's it for this Friday. It's sunny here in Atlanta. I hope it's sunny where you are. Have a great weekend. Relax, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks.